Angela is here for a wellness checkup. There are no abnormalities according to her. She has no medical history, no surgical history, no psych history. Uh, she feels safe at home. She does not work currently. She denies any use of alcohol, tobacco, drug. She does have an allergy history of ibuprofen. She is currently not taking any medications. And her recent vaccine was the meningitis vaccine. She has none for today. She was encouraged to follow up with her next vaccine, which is a flu vaccine, which needs to be updated, and possibly the COVID vaccine. Since there are no further complaints, um, pain, fever, and vital signs were stable, we'll go ahead with the head to assessment. Now I'm going to start with the head assessment. So before we enter the room, I'm going to inspect the patient's head. So we are watching for symmetry of the head, making sure there's no um, bumps or lumps anywhere. Okay, then we're going to palpate for any abnormalities. Check for even hair distribution. Any pain? No. Next is the eyes. We need to inspect the eyes, the color of the eyes. Check for any drainage. You can pull down the conjunctiva and check the color as well. We're going to check for peripheral vision. So she's going to close one eye and also close the same eye. And from arm's length, while looking straight at me, my eye, you're going to tell me the fingers you see. One, two, three. Good. And we do it to the other eye. Two, three. Okay. The second step is vision acuity. So since Angela wears the glasses, I'll let her put her glasses on. And 20, Angela stands 20 feet away, so get up, come closer to me, and read from the snail, snailing test. Angela, read the smallest letters you can read clearly. D, E, F, T, O, T, E, L. Okay, so that, with her glasses, that would be 20-20 vision, but without her glasses, that might be not a perfect vision. We're going to test for cranial nerve 3, which is an oculomotor uh, nerve. This will test um, the function of the pupil if it's able to constrict and dilate. So take off your glasses, it's easier to see. <laughs> it's going to look straight into the distance and I'm going to bring an object close to her nose. Her pupils should her pupil should dilate when she's looking close to the, out in the distance and it should constrict when I bring the pen closer. So look out to the distance. It is better to do this step with dim lights or in a dark space. So when I bring this towards you, look at the pen. The next step is to still test for the constriction and the dilation of the pupil. This time with a flashlight, a torchlight, or a pen light. All right, look straight into a distance. I'm gonna bring the light from this side. The pupil should constrict and the second one should constrict too. Good. Good. Sixth cranial nerve, which is abducent. This checks for involuntary um, shaking of the eyes, which is nystagmus. So I'm gonna use an object, a pen in this case. I'm just gonna stare straight into the distance, Angela, and then I have the pen a little far from her face. I'm gonna take the pen and move to different points. Don't move your head, just your eyes, okay? Follow the pen. Just with your eyes. Okay, eyes move freely, and there's no shaking. Okay. 
they're going to inspect the ears. So I'll just check the ears for any lesion, any drainage, any redness, um, inflammation on both of them. Um, her skin is intact, there's no open areas. If I did have an otoscope, I would, since she's an adult, I will pull her pinna back and use the otoscope to visualize um, the ear. You want to make sure the ear is pearly white and not yellow with any drainage or redness. Alright, palpation. I'm going to palpate her ears, make sure it's, there's no tenderness and there's no pain with that or lesions. Then I'll palpate mastoid process, which is this bone at the back of the ear. She didn't feel pain with that. Is there any pain? No. If I did have a tune and fork, I would be able to do the Weber's test and the ringing test. Um, but I'm not able to do that, so I'm going to do the whisper test to check for her hearing. I'll send this link for her. And Seventeen. Close this ear. Seventeen. Now this is the sinuses and the nose. I'm going to check her nose for symmetry. Um, she's going to lift her head. I'm going to check for any drainage. Um, have you had recent nose runniness? No. Alright. So I'm going to use a torchlight to check for any redness. And I'll make sure her septum is midline. <sighs> All right, so the nose is in check. The next is for sinuses. I'm going to palpate her frontal sinus and her maxillary sinuses for any tenderness, which is abnormal. Is it tender? No. Is it pain? No. Any tenderness? No. Okay. We're moving to her mouth. We're gonna check the lips first. Um, there's no sores on her lips. There's no redness on it. There's no drainage. There, it's symmetric. It's not symmetrical, but it's normal. It's supposed to be. All right. So in the mouth, we're gonna check for her teeth. Teeth. <laughs> we're gonna check her gums. <laughs> There's no swollen gums in here and it's not red. Okay, open your mouth. The tongue, the color is normal, pink, not white, yellow. There's no thrush. Um, and then she's gonna stick her tongue out for me. Stick your tongue out. Okay, I can see the uvula over there. All right. All right, now we're gonna check the nerves. First one is cranial nerve five, which is a trigeminal nerve. So I said this, she's gonna bite down and I'm gonna feel for the muscles that helps her chew. Bulgy muscles and the temporal muscle, um, temporal lobe. Now she's gonna open your mouth against my resistance. She's able to do that, her mouth doesn't just flop. So that nerve is intact. The next nerve, is cranial nerve seven, which is a facial nerve. Uh, you're gonna do a couple of things for me, Angela. You're gonna smile, good, frown, okay. Close your eyes tightly, puff up your cheeks, good. So she did that, no asymmetry and no difficulty. The next one will be cranial nerve nine, which is glossophageal nerve. With this one, she's gonna stick her tongue out for me and say, ah, uh, ah. Uh, I should see the uvula rise up, which is normal. Um, and then we'll check her gal gag reflex. <laughs> okay, so she does have a gag reflex. The next nerve is vagus nerve, which is number 10. Uh, with this nerve, she should be able to talk without difficulty and swallow the water like you can see. Oh. Next one is hypoglossial nerve. Um, this nerve checks for her tongue ability. 
Take your time, guys. Move side to side for me. Good. And then the last one is accessory nerves. Checks the neck muscles and if she is able to move without difficulty. So turn to your side. Okay. And then I'm going to put some resistance. Put stripe for me. Good. This is going to be the neck. All right. So we're going to check the shape, the size of the neck. Um, any lesions on the skin, any abnormalities, there's none. Then we're going to check for um, lymph nodes to check for inflammation of the lymph nodes. There should be no pain. Checking the one behind the ear and we'll work our way under the neck or the jawline. As the thyroid, this is the lens. The thyroid is behind the or the voice box. So you're gonna palpate deeper and you should be <coughs> covered back. Next is the carotid. We're gonna check it. We're gonna palpate each of them at a time. We don't want to do both of them together. Now we're going to auscultate, listen to, for bruise of the carotid. Okay, so let's just turn to that side for me. So there should be no swish, swish, swish sound. That's not good. All right, so we're going to inspect her chest. Uh, we're going to inspect the shape, the size of it. Make sure it's not barrel. Um, gonna, so we're going to inspect her breathing um, capability. Is she using muscles to help accelerate muscles? Um, is she using her abdomen? Is she in any distress? You can see she's breathing normally. All right, I'm sorry, you're going to stand for me. So I'm going to assess fremitus, which is basically vibrations um, whenever the patient speaks over the lungs. It should be even throughout the lungs. So I'm going to let Angela say the word 99 as I do this. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. I'm going to do the same from the front. 99, 99, 90, 99, 99. Okay. So doing this assessment, sometimes body mass can prevent you from feeling the vibration, but increased fremitus can show increased fluid in the lungs or in the plural um, space of the lungs. Decreased fremitus can mean there's air trapped in the lungs, which an example can be pneumothorax. Because when you percuss, it should just be a resonance sound since the lungs is just an empty um, organ. Last step is auscultation. With this, you use your diaphragm interiorly take a deep breath should be clear movement and you're comparing sides so you're doing side by side also want to assess her rise make sure it's symmetric So there's no crackles, rails, bronchi, it's just clear and even on each side. Cardiac, we're going to inspect her chest again. Do you have any pain in your no. chest? Cool. We're going to palpate her chest and check for any tenderness, any pain. While we're palpating, we'll check for thrills, which is lifting because of high, how hard the heart is. We want to palpate the PMI, which is the point of um, maximal point of maximal impact 
So this is midline to the clavicle and from the fifth intercostal space. It's going to probably be under the base. Okay, good. Now auscultation. We're going to listen to the line max of the heart. We're going to listen to the erotic valve. So second intercostal space to the left, right. Listen for any murmur, regularity of the heart, it's regular. And then go to the pulmonic, which is also second intercostal to the left. Then air space, the third intercostal space, or air point. Then the mitral valve, which is the fourth. And then the point of maximal impact, which is the fifth. Good. Assessment of the abdomen, we're going to inspect as always the shape of the abdomen. Hers is flat, as you can see. We check for difficulty in breathing if she's using her abdomen in breathing. Then, after inspection, we're going to auscultate. We're going to auscultate the four quadrants of her abdomen. Start with. This is the gargling. I'm not going to activate. Are you having frequent bowels or is your bowels usual? Usual. No diarrhea? No, no. constipation? No. Okay. After auscultation, move to percussion of the four quadrants as well. Sorry for my cold hand. The stomach should be a little hollow if she's not eating. The liver should be dense and more full. You want to pick us around the liver um, to show the size of it. This can help you check for liver enlargement in the patient. They're going to palpate. So I'm going to palpate abdomen, check for any masses. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'll check for pain as well. So. Soft palpations. Any pain? Yeah. Um, deeper? Yeah. Deeper? Yeah. Deeper? Yeah. Okay. I forgot to auscultate for any brewing in the main erotic. We're going to assess for CVA tenderness, which basically shows if the patient has any inflammation in the kidneys, any pulse, any um, kidney stones. I'm going to scan this way. I'm going to pull my hand flat on your lower back. And I'm gonna hit to tell me if you feel any pain. No pain. No pain. Okay. So deep tender reflexes. I will assess that if I had the equipment, but I really don't. So I'm gonna take your leg and stroke. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so the toes should curl, it shouldn't stand up. In adult, that's what happens. I'm gonna check for your balance. Um Look straight at me and alternate doing this as fast as you can. Okay. Now you're gonna lay down. <laughs> and then you're gonna move your heel to your shin on the opposite leg. From your heel on to your shin this way. Okay. And do the other one. All right. Now you're gonna get up. <laughs> this test for your um, coordination. So you're gonna touch your nose and then touch my finger without delaying as fast as you can. Okay. Do the other hand. Okay. Now I'm gonna watch how you ambulate, how you walk. So walk from. There to me. 
Okay, turn and walk back. Okay, there's no shaking, there's no tremors, there's no shuffling, so it's normal gait. This is skin assessment for the skin. You're just gonna look for any open areas in his skin, any um, wounds on his skin. With the open skin, I see nothing. Everything is normal, no redness. Next is muscles, muscular system. We're gonna check her range of motion and how she's able to move. All right. Um, Watch your hands and legs. Extend them. Extend. Put, put them down. Oh, that's my legs. Um, that watch your legs. I know. Watch your legs. Good ID. Watch your legs. Hyperextend your legs. Okay. Do a flex. Okay. Okay. Boom. Boom. Sit down. Um, lift your hands up. Hyperextend. Okay. Now this one. Okay. Turn your head. See how good you can turn. Side to side, up, down. All right. Okay. Can you bend? Go back. How oh, you can reach? Okay. Stand up. All right. Now. Back. Push your arm. Push against my leg. Both. My hand. Yeah, both. <laughs> Push your leg against me. Good. <laughs> Respect, as always, is her skin. Is it pallor? Is it um? Is there cyanosis going on? It's nothing like that. Um, the best place for cyanosis is her nails. It's, um, she is warm. She's not hot. Her skin is just dry. She's not clammy or sweaty. Next is the various arteries. We palpated the carotids earlier. We're gonna do bilateral brachial artery. Do the radials. Then, if it was appropriate, I would do her femorals, which is um, oh, I down here, closer to her groin. Then, I will do the popliteal, uh, tibial, distal tibial, back of her ankle, and all the pedial arteries. So, to rate arteries, um, hers were both basically plus positive plus two um, bilaterally. Uh, they were weak for me. They were regular and not sluggish. Um, with that, you also feel for swelling in her extremities. There's no visible swelling and there's no pitting swelling in her limbs. Um, that's it.